Shalom, welcome to our daily class, Rabbi Nachman on Patreon. We uh, entered this explanation last time about the idea of the Misader Miyashev et Amochim, the idea of that part of our spiritual makeup that organizes and orders our mind. Now, we've been in this Torah, remember that the idea the whole Torah began with the idea of going after the infinite light. That the infinite light is something that we're longing for. We want to get close to God, and yet we can only touch it and fall away. Touch it and fall away. Mate lo mate. So the Rebbe explain, it explains this process to us um, very well. And we understand that it seems like this conundrum that <laughs> go for it or you're not going to get it. Go for it you're not going to get it. Another Jewish paradox, but it's not a paradox that, that, that hurts us, it actually builds us. It's a paradox that makes us into a vessel to receive more and more and more of God's light into our soul. So when you first get to the idea of touch, can't touch it, get close, fall away, get close, no, don't, don't be discouraged. Be encouraged because this is exactly how we transform a physical being into a spiritual being, especially in this world. So we touched also on the level yesterday, amazing level, which really needs, deserves its own shoe or at least one, where we're talking about the, the creation of the vessel of, to receive the mind. starts with the feet. When the feet run to do the mitzvot, and then they, they, they create a vessel to receive the hands and the torso, which is, the, the, of course, the desire to do the mitzvot. And, and then the, the mitzvot, the desire to do the mitzvot makes a cleat to receive the intelligence of the mitzvot. And then on top of that, of course, is the keter, your little keeper here, which is the misader miyashev. You know, the king... He's not really king until they put the crown on his head. What does that crown symbolize? Exactly this idea. That they put the crown on the king's head, and that crown be is the power of the misader miyasheva sechel. In other words, the, the one whose mind is the most organized and the most settled to be able to run a country, imagine... Think about how hard it is to run your own life, to run a country. Now, of course, you have help. And, of course, our ego wants to tell us, sure, I could run a country, no problem. <laughs> they say that now until they give you the job. But the king, like King David or King Solomon, they were able to because they had this crown. They had this power that would order and structure their mind and they became a channel of God's light that would enable them to run such a project, such an operation as a country with millions of people. So this power of Keter, we call the crown in, in the tree of life, is, does basically this. It sits above the head and organizes the head, which then brings down the light in a, in a very structured way, and it enters the hands and the heart, and then that brings it down further all the way into the feet, into our covenant, and then we know how to do things intuitively and, and expressly with thought and understanding. You know, when someone asks you a, quest, a question, the first thing you should do is pause. Well, let me think about that. That's an interesting question. Where is it coming from? Why are they asking it? Why do they want to know? Will it help them to know? Do I know? Maybe I don't know. Maybe I learned it once and I forgot. Maybe it's still there. Maybe it's here to teach me something. Those are all the questions I want to ask before I even give an answer. And that's work. Now, when you're in the business that I'm in, which is therapy, you know, you, you learn very quickly not to answer fast because you're dealing with people's lives. You're dealing with their, with their hearts. And so this power to order the mind, once we have it, then we can be a, a settled person who is able to help others. Whether it's in Torah or in psychology or in your business 
or in your school. We need this power of the crown. Now, we don't have to be King David. No, we're not jumping there. <laughs> they, got a, they got a special award for those folks. Okay, we just need to be the best that we can be. And when we are, you see, it's always good enough. And then you can get better and better until the last day on this planet. Okay, so all of that we should understand as a, an introduction to this concept which really begs more explanation. What is a settled mind and what is an ordered mind? So a settled mind means you don't, eno nivhala shiv, it says in Perkei you don't answer quickly. Your mind does not jump out of its place to be the one who answers. I remember in school, you know, okay, they ask a question, everybody raise their hand, raise their hand, and they want to be the first one to answer. But that's actually not the way we want to do it in the real world. Elementary school is not the real world <laughs> most of the time, right? It's not a competition. Rather, the competition is to keep the mind settled in its place. So that's miyashev. That the keter, when you realize you have a keter of God on your head, you're not quick to do anything. Because you realize every moment His will is available. And every moment what He wants, His agenda, is within the reach of a thought. If you know how to think. So we need that settled mind. Now the second one, the second power of the keter, of the crown that sits on the king's head is called the misader. Now what is misader? Well, to make an order of things. Now, there are different ways to order things. Of course, the classic one is through numbers. One, two, three, four, etc. But you, there's something that's most important, something that's secondary, third, fourth in place of importance. So, you know, a lot of times our struggle comes intellectually and mentally because we don't know what's really more important at any given moment. Is it more important that I dive in now or learn now? Or talk to my friends on Facebook? Is it more important for me to tell that person over there to be quiet or to let him alone and just deal with what's going on? There's an order of things, a proper order, that when we use it, things fall into a proper place. Now there's also a thing called spatial order. It's a little different because that's the ability to see things in their place. Now any, any person who tries to order their house and make their apartment or wherever they live pleasant to be in knows that everything needs a place. So so too in the mind there is a place for everything there's a place for thinking about god wants and there's a place for thinking about what my wife needs or my kids or the people around me there's a place in the mind that also wants to know when do i get a vacation you know <laughs> and you know as my, my wife says you're always on vacation <laughs> well she doesn't say that too much these days but um, you know, when you learn Torah full time and, you, and you're reaching out to people, it's, it's really, it's not like work. It's the most beautiful thing you can do is to have this life of, of trying to, to learn God's word and to share it in the world. So I bless all of you to, to become the greatest students and teachers of what you know, because everything you know can be shared with someone else. And this is how the wisdom of God spreads in the world. Mouth to mouth, person to person. Okay, so the misader of the mind, this other, the second power of Keter, it is this power that helps us intuitively know what's more important in the order of adifiut in Hebrew. What is adif? In other words, your priorities. Because if I'm not clear of my own priorities, how can I help anybody else with their priorities? What's more important in any given situation? Well, it's situational. Like say you're, you're talking to somebody, if a client comes into my office and says, oh, I'm hungry, I say, eat, eat. Let him eat first because he'll think better after. He'll be able to answer and talk better and express himself because the food gives yeshuva dot. It brings the mind 
down to a more settled place. As anybody knows, when you try to think when you're hungry, it's not so good. Now, there is a level, a higher level, where a person won't eat at all because he's such a, engaged in such deep, attached thought to reality that he can't be bothered by food. But we're not talking about that level here. So the, there is an intuition that is developed about the order of things. And how do you get it? Well, you get it from the Torah, first of all. And where do you get it in the Torah? Well, from the Ten Commandments. It tells you the first thing you got to know, God is God. And the second thing you know is there are other gods out there in the world that want to compete for your attention span. And then the next thing you got to know is that, that we don't curse God, God forbid, right? And we don't come, and we don't, we try not to question God in a pejorative or negative sense. We can ask God, God, why did this happen? But that's in a sincere sense. You're allowed to ask, you might get an answer, and you might not, or the answer might be above you at the moment. So we go down the Ten Commandments, you know, and we know also in the Torah, the first command that Adam is given long before the Ten Commandments is the power to reproduce, to have children, to make babies. That power is implanted in humanity from the beginning. So I know that that's the first mitzvah in the Torah that Adam has given, so it's an important mitzvah. It's an important part of human software and our genetic makeup. So when you learn the Torah and you learn the order of things, and then it helps order our mind, the way we think. What's first? What's second? What's a Torah command? And what's a rabbinical ordina ordination? I started to say ordinance, you know. <laughs> that's, the wrong, that's the wrong field of operation. <laughs> How much ordinance you got on that F-16. But no, the, and so you have to know the difference between what's from the Torah as a command and what the rabbis are telling us, we, it's, it's a good idea to do this. And the rabbis don't tell it because they, they have nothing else to do. The rabbis create their commands from their connection to God. And they were ordered to make fences to protect us. Just like if you buy a flock of sheep, do you, do you just throw them out in a field without a fence? They're not going to be there too long. Okay, so this is what the Keter does in the mind. It gives us order, it gives us structure, it gives us shape. It gives, it gives us Seder of importance in our choices, in our considerations. It gives us the ability to not answer, to wait, to say, you know, that's a good question. Let me think about that a minute. You know, when you do that, you buy time, but you're really buying space in your mind to think and to create a space to get the answer, perhaps from a higher place, which is even more important. So this Keter is, is something we all need, and we get it, we get it by wanting God. And the already goes on to explain to us that we rodef, and then we fall away. We run after Ain't Self, and then we hit the wall, and we hit the, what's called the Prisa which literally means it's like a curtain, is a, is a prisa between two rooms. And you hit the, the border of the mind where you don't want to go any further because you will stop being you. And you will be absorbed into infinite light and you will not come back to your body. Now, this is a, a real thing. People have died like this. Usually it's because they don't have breaks and they don't, un, they don't have re, uh, reason enough to stay here. You know, they just want to not be here, is, is the bottom line. And they run to God so hard, they either go insane or they just, they, they leave their bodies. And it, it used to be that when the Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, the Talmud teaches us that people would mourn the Beit HaMikdash and they would die in prayer, feeling so bad about it. So God, as long as we're here, God wants us here. And if He wants to take us out of here, that's His business. And he has his own perfect timing. But we, our job is to run to Ein Sof and, and then we hit the wall, we hit the Prisa. And, but what happens is, and he explains here in paragraph 5, that your mind actually strikes the boundary and creates a palace. And he calls these the nine palaces of the Keter. These, each palace is a space that you open. And, and, and where a little bit more of the divine light can realm, a, another filtered light can, can stay with your intelligence. Now, what happens afterwards is we fall back. 
and then we go back again and we fall back. Now, it, I, I thought of it like, like a miner. Think of a miner under a mountain and he's trying to dig a tunnel. You know, and he's tapping his, his hammer on his pick or on his, on his chisel. And, and every time he hits the rock and something falls out, he's making a space. So that's what we're doing in our mind. We're making little spaces by running after Hashem and then pausing before putting on the brakes at the right time in order to say, okay, today we ran after God. Now I'm going to run after mitzvot. Because remember, the way the Rebbe told us in the beginning, the first paragraph of this Torah is we achieve, we get closer to God by doing His will with joy. And we, we talked about this idea that we make our will His will and it becomes one will. You become part of the river of God's will and that's a very joyous moment. Now, even if you're doing something you don't want to do, you know, there was some very difficult mitzvah to do. You know, God commanded Shaul Amalek to kill the king of Amalek, and he had him right there, and, and Shaul had a hard time. He couldn't do it. So it's not such a simple thing. Okay. So we really have to understand how this works. It's a tool, it's a technique that God gives us through Rabbi Nachman explaining to us this process of how we create a space within consciousness to receive Ein Sof, to go after Ein Sof, to pull back and to create what eventually becomes this palace where you can dwell with your Creator. And that's pretty awesome. So I want to bless you all with this power, with this palace, with this running and returning, with this touching and pulling away and to heal ourselves from the idea that I get there and I'm there. Well, that's not true. You're never there. You get there and you fall back. You go again, you get a little further. And so and when we get all these things down, we, we remove the, the frustration of what looks like a paradox and it becomes a pathway, a derech. And it, from that way, we find ourselves getting closer and closer to Hashem, this Rat Hashem. All the best to, to all of you out there and we'll see you again on our daily class in Patreon.